together here today, we celebrate not only the unity of our brotherhood, but also the, the enduring legacy of Omega Men. Our 112 year history is defined by our four cardinal principles, our unwavering commitment to service, and the bonds of friendship that we have cultivated uh, together. We commemorate our achievement because of the theme Omega Men promoted a harmonious future through friendship and service. When I read this theme of Omega Men promoting harmonious future through friendship and service, I don't know about you, but what sticks out to me is harmony. I think everybody in this room knows what friendship is. Everybody knows what harmony is, I mean what service is, but harmony maybe not so much. I'm sure if the walls in your bathroom could talk, <laughs> and the windshield in your car could speak, it may say, or oh, I'm curious what it will say about your ability to harmonize. <laughs> but I will tell you that harmony underscores our dedication to foster peace and unity and balance. We aspire to make a positive impact on society and work towards a world that where people can coexist harmoniously. You know, I believe that if the people in Israel and Gaza knew what Omega knows, about friendship and how essential it is to live together in harmony, there may be just a little bit more peace right now. Amen. 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 A harmonious friendship and service highlight our intentions to create a beautiful place, to uplift souls. But to achieve this, we must first find inner peace within ourselves. We must understand what a good friend is and why we serve. So I just ask for you to take a second and have just a little set reflection and ask yourself, are you a good friend? Mm -hmm. And do you know why you serve? You know, we was at the table laughing around, but when I think about harmony, I'm just reminded of a choir. A harmony involves multiple individuals coming together to create a beautiful sound. Mm -hmm. Harmonious service requires us to understand our individual roles and responsibilities. It's important that we approach service with confidence and a positive mindset. <clears throat> Remember that you can't effectively mentor our youth if you don't have inner peace within yourself. Mm -hmm. You know what I've learned over the time? I learned that hurt people hurt, mm -hmm. hurt people. Yeah. Yeah. So it's important that you find inner peace uh, within yourself. It is crucial to not define yourself by your challenges. Mm -hmm. Our first cardinal principle of manhood teaches us to define ourselves by our character and our actions, not by the challenges we face. So it's important to embrace your challenges. But don't let your life challenge define you. When you're communicating about yourself, your friends and others choose your words wisely. Mm -hmm. As the power of our words cannot be underestimated. Mm -hmm. The Bible reminds us that the tongue has the power mm -hmm. of life yeah. Yeah. and death. Uh -huh. Emphasizing the profound impact our words have on others. Mm -hmm. So for instance, don't call someone a recovering addict. They're just someone embracing sobriety successful. Amen. Right. You're not an immigrant. You're a newcomer to the land of opportunity. Mm -hmm. People are not homeless. You are, you are a friendly, unhoused neighbor. You're not old, but bastard. Yes, sir. You are a well-seasoned individual, All right. a veteran <laughs> in this thing or this joy that we call life. She is not stubborn. She's just tenacious. All right. He is not cheese. He is intentional in creating generational wealth. <laughs> you are not single. You are enjoying life in solitude. All right. <laughs> I tell people, I am not fat. I am large and in charge. All right. <laughs> my, my next point on harmonious friendship and service emphasize the importance of balance in our lives. Mm -hmm. uh, balance is a powerful way to live. It's what our younger generation are emphasizing. See, I was born in 1981. I consider myself an OG millennial. I'm at the beginning of this thing. And what the millennials are trying to tell you, parents, the, the generation X, what they're trying to tell you, parents, is that they love their balance and they love their balance. This is them trying to create balance in their lives. 
It is essential that we, as a chapter here at Zeta Kappa Kappa, that we avoid the small percent of the people doing the majority of the work. You know what we call the 20% rule. Where 20% of the eight, uh, people do 80% of the work. <laughs> Being unbalanced is like eating on one of these tables that don't have all their legs. It's hard to focus on self-care. Being unbalanced makes it hard for you to be in deep thought. Uh, being unbalanced makes it hard for you to set goals for yourself. Mm -hmm. Learning when to say yes and when to say no is critical mm -hmm. to balance. So please don't let being a friend and providing service stress you out. Mm -hmm. Prioritize yourself appropriately. Remember to serve your families and your community in harmonious proportion. You know, I had an uncle. I talked about him last night at dinner. Uncle was an OG. <laughs> uh, my uncle professed, and, and when I was 16 years old, he told me, he said, hey, uh, if you give your girlfriend a dollar and your wife two, oh. Oh. <laughs> so you'll never have a problem. <laughs> now, I profess that. <laughs> a minute of your time, uh, and giving your family and friends and your hobbies two minutes of your time, uh, you will prevent problems in your household. Uh, <laughs> now, if your spouse and friends and children don't want you around, serve all you want. <laughs> that right there won't help you. I learned early in my career about the, about the importance of balance. I was a young professional. I was working at Price Waterhouse Cooper's Accounting Firm in Greensboro, North Carolina. I was fresh out of college. The only suit that I had was my membership selection process suit. <laughs> 23, you know what it is, the black shirt. I'm sorry, the black suit, the white shirt, the black tie, the black socks, the black shoes. That was my professional wardrobe. I recall boarding the plane leaving North Carolina en route to Virginia. The plane was called a puddle jumper. Because it was so small, I only had 50 seats on the plane. So I boarded the plane, I made my way to the back of the plane, I sat down and got in my seat. Now, I was 20 years old, it's very cute. I wasn't married at the time. It's very cute, cute flight attendant walks up to a 21 year old me and says, Sir, I have a seat for you in first class. As you can imagine, the thoughts running through my head at the time. So as the flight was going on, I went to her and said, hey, ma'am, thank you for letting me sit in first class. What made me so special? And she kind of leaned in closer to my hearing, and she politely whispered. She said, uh, sir, the pilot said that we had to balance the way we plan. <laughs> is equipped with the diversity of thought. Diversity of thought for Omega Psi Phi fraternity is its strength. Uh, but we, we have to handle this with care. Adhering to our founders' call to a higher standard. What I like about our principles is that manhood teaches us to resolve our differences with respect. A scholarship encourages us to learn and grow from our differences. Perseverance reminds us that we can overcome these obstacles and uplift calls for us to support and hug on one another. Mm -hmm. uh, I was uh, in the house one day and I was saw a water bug crawling around. And I walked up to it and I smashed that water bug with all my dirt. It was a wrap for the little fellow. <laughs> well, a, a few months later, I was cleaning out the garage and I accidentally stepped on the spider. There's nothing I hate worse than a spider. Mm -hmm. uh, but I still felt bad about the accident because I didn't mean to kill the little fellow. Uh, most purple on purple incidents are accidents. Be mindful, I did call pest control, because uh, my wife was hysterical that not only was a water bug and a spider in there, so here comes the pet people. But I'm reminded of that incident that purple on purple, even accidental, is still harmful. 
-hmm. Purple on purple damages our reputation. It makes it unattractive to it makes us unattractive to partners and sponsors and, and candidates alike. Purple on purple decreases innovation. A culture of conflicts hinders creativity. Purple on purple increases member attrition. Mm. Now the reclamation team has to work harder. The retention team has to work harder. Members leave this organization because they don't want to be a part of a toxic impact. Mm -hmm. That's right. uh, purple on purple reduces morale. It erodes trust. Who's motivated to serve and who's motivated to be your friend if they think you may stab them in the back? Mm. Mm. Good intentions and even greater communication solves all purple on purple incidents. As we contemplate a future, our future and the pillars to sustain our brotherhood, let's commit ourselves to passing on a better me. Mm -hmm. I like to use the word hospitality over service. When people come to the international headquarters where I have opportunity to work, they say, oh, we appreciate your service. I say, well, I hope you appreciate even greater our hospitality. Because mm -hmm. to me, uh, hospitality means to be friendly and welcoming to our guests, mm -hmm. to our friends, and even strength. Mm. Mm -hmm. Service is black and white, but hospitality is what gives service its colors. Mm -hmm. it's, it's what makes the royal purple and the old gold so special to me. You know, Maya Angelou was right when she said, I've learned that people will forget what I said. Mm -hmm. She said, people will forget what I did. Mm -hmm. But she said, they will never forget how I made them feel. Mm -hmm. uh, being hospitable creates a good feeling. Mm -hmm. Uh, will you encourage people, especially my teachers in the room with our young people, but when you encourage people to love as if they've never been hated, when you encourage them to express themselves as if they've never been judged, when you can affirm your friend's desire until their affirmations become a reality, when you can dream as if you've never had a nightmare, mm -hmm. you and everyone around you will feel good and you at then have embraced the spirit hospitality. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I thank you for the opportunity to provide remarks to you today. I hope you go out and do to be the best version of yourself every day. Be 1% better for tomorrow. I thank you for this opportunity to speak. May the Omega Sci-Fi, the greatest land, I mean the greatest fraternity in the land, flourish for generations to come. Thank you so much for the opportunity.